myself and welcome back to another exciting, educational, interesting, hopefully not too boring episode of Guide to Poor Parenting, a podcast where me, Jason, and me, Zane, have <sighs> a few drinks and talk shit about our kids. Woo! So we, <laughs> um, I will apologize ahead of time. I, this episode is coming out a little bit late. Uh, Jennifer and I had recorded a podcast and the audio was terrible. It sounded like... Jennifer was talking into my microphone across the room, and you could barely hear her, so I had to Aww. trash that audio, and so Zane was very sweet and said he would step in and help us um, put film, on a new episode, record a brand new episode, and uh, so we can get it out four days late, but still, yeah. here it is. Um, so... Please, for all four four of our listeners, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Guide to Poor Parenting, all one word. I thought it was nine. What? I thought it was nine. Oh, nine. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Zane, how's your week been? Uh, not bad. Just work. I'm, uh, in case anybody didn't know, I'm a hospice nurse. So I deal with death a lot and also just uh, dealing with like patients and their families. But all in all, no, not bad. Just, yeah. just riding around in a hot ass car. Mm-hmm. Gonna, we're this will be a call out episode because we're calling it highly Volkswagen because we uh, we bought our Volkswagen from them and the mm-hmm. AC went out six months later and still s- haven't been fixed. Six weeks after the AC went out. Yeah, it's like I scheduled the appointment to get it fixed, go in that Friday. And magically, the the machine that fixes the AC went out, and just that morning, and they said like, "Oh, okay, we'll keep the ticket open," and uh, uh, like they lied. They lied, and so we've been calling like at least once a week, saying, "Hey, we just want to know what's going on." And they're like, oh, um, well, we're still waiting for the part to be fixed. Okay, we got the part to fix the AC, but we need the AC people to come and, and repair the tool. And that's, again, six weeks. Yeah, and it's for, like, you know, this episode will come out um, uh, it's in August. mid-August. Um, and this is going on middle of the summer. So yeah. it is hot, hot. as fuck. Ugh. Yeah, and it's been raining a lot lately too, so we can't drive around with the with windows the, down. Nope. At least that helps, but like most of the time, Zane's usually done by about two or three, and yep. so it's not terrible. But those few days when you've been home late and you're just like, I can just tell you're sweaty mm-hmm. and gross. Yeah, I have to like I, I shower in the morning and I have to take another shower, or sometimes a whore bath just to like just like freshen up for the rest of the day. I wish we could get Kalia to do that. We're still battling with our little girl and funkiness. She is gross. Ugh. I I felt bad for her this morning because like every morning for well every Wednesday at school I have to sign a little folder, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, let me get your folder this morning so I could sign it. Couldn't find it, and so I was like digging around in her backpack while she was wearing it. And I was like, what am I smelling? So I got a little close and I started sniffing her. She's like, don't smell my hair. I was like, baby, you stink. I was like, that sweatshirt I think is just. Oh, stinky. So yeah. I was like, go put it away, go wash it, and go put some jitter on because you stink. So <laughs> I was like, what? And she's like, I don't stink. I don't smell it. And it's like, yeah. and I was like, you girl. may not smell your own perfume, but you smell funky. Yeah. We had got that Lume stuff, and when she uses it, it seems to work, but we just. But can't. when she, if she uses it. Yeah. Oh. If she bathes. If she, like, didn't we tell her to wash her hair last week? Like, use, actually use shampoo. Mm hmm. And you think her hair is still kind of gross? No, the hair hasn't been the problem. It's always been her underarm odor. Uh, like her hair, when it gets kind of musty, it has a unique scent to it. But her her bo is just phenomenal. So <laughs> yeah, like we, we don't want her to get like picked on at school. Like we don't want her to be the stinky kid. But I think we're at the point where she's just gonna have to learn like. Like, like, be bullied at school. Yeah, and, and she's gonna go come home crying. Is like, they call me stinky. Yeah. Well, I know she's already getting teased about it. Someone, at least from Wesley. Yeah, but Wesley's a little asshole. <laughs> God. Oh, do, do. we've had drama with Wesley too? But we'll uh, we'll let Jennifer tell that story. Yeah, story that, time. That, that's that's a Jennifer story. Woo. Um. Well, I will say, 
I did feel bad because I actually spanked him the other night. And I, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not spanked either kid, but we, Jennifer and I tend to go to a support group for adopted parents. And on the way back, Wesley was just being a shithead, kept telling Kelly to keep his name out of her mouth. You know, and she was telling a story so that involved him. He's like, keep my name out of your mouth. I'm like, dude, shut up. And wasn't and, he farting in the car? Yeah, I was just farting in the car. And he's like, Jason, can I poop in your house? And I was just like, oh, fine. But he just kept farting and being rude. And he got out of the car and made some smart ass little comment. And then as we're all walking in, he turns around, he goes in first, closes the door and locks it in front of us. <gasps> So I, uh, Jennifer luckily had a key, has keys to her house, so she let us in, and uh, he's, I just walk into the bathroom, unlock it, and like pull him off the toilet and just spank his ass. I didn't like hit him hard, but one good little pop on the ass, yeah, and I grabbed him by the face and was like, don't fuck with me, kid. And he's like, you're pushing it with me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I wasn't there. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's been a, a nightmare. But... Kalia's back in school. Well, they're both back in school. Mm -hmm. um, well, Wesley apparently is no longer in after school. Yeah. Well, we'll let Jennifer tell that one. <laughs> but for our own kid, we've actually gotten one um, one message from a teacher saying, or her teacher saying that the uh, that she's like she doesn't seem to have much of a filter. I'm like, we know. Yeah. <laughs> like you like she has zero. Like yeah. she just says whatever the top of her head. Yeah. And so it was like. I was like, if you, you, she'll respond to redirection as mm -hmm. long as you don't humiliate her. Like, if you don't, like, do it in front of everybody, she usually responds pretty well. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, because we, in, like, third and second grade, we used to get calls all the time. Like, she's freaking out and won't stop crying. And I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, ma'am. <laughs> she, she, that girl is all about drama. Yeah. That's just like, ugh. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> She's also 10 or 9. About to be 10. So, yeah. yeah. So, what are we talking about today? Oh, no. What are we drinking, Mr. Zane? Uh, we're drinking some uh, gin uh, from New Orleans. New Orleans? Uh, 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 was it 73? Is it 73 or 73? I thought it was 73. 7-3 uh, gin. Yeah. 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 It's uh, like when we uh, went down to New Orleans for the wedding, we just... Like we had a had a good group come come for the wedding, and we just happened upon a distillery just just outside the quarter, yep. and they gave a tour, and we're like, "Fuck yeah!" So yeah. And it was like thirty, it was like, maybe like twenty bucks or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. But and they gave it, us like seven like little like uh, little communion uh, shot glasses, mm -hmm. and they always they 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 filled up the whole tray, and they always had leftovers, and like, here, take them. Yeah. So we got blitzed. Yeah. There was vodka, there was regular gin. There, there was, was cucumber vodka. Mm -hmm. Like They had a whiskey, I with, think. Yeah, and, and they just, last time we were there, had a bourbon. Yeah, and they had a rum, yeah. too. But and they, uh, one one drink they didn't let us sample was the, the uh, gin that we're drinking now. We, mm -hmm. They were like, oh, we have a specialty gin, Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, what's special about it? And the guy, the owner was like, well, we take the gin, just our normal gin, which was good. Yeah. Uh, but they put it into bur they put it into uh, burnt oak caskets, like you do with bourbon. Yeah. And they so aged, it's aged. It, yeah. aged just like bourbon. So it looks like bourbon, but it's yeah. gin. And Jason and I, for the most part, we hate original gin. Because it's just juniper berries. It's super dry. Too. Yeah. Well, 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 that's not true. The one gin we tried in Portland was oh, yeah. well, phenomenal. The, well, that was section, exception to the rule. Yeah. So. But yeah, this is like, we drink this straight. And it's yeah. like, oh, it's so good. It's it it's it's like a, it's a, it tastes like a, a whiskey or a bourbon to me, mm -hmm. but with like undertones of the elderberry. Um, yeah. Like the elderberry is muted, and you get all those like really good flavors from the wood, like the, the mm -hmm. cherry and the tobacco or whatever you get from <laughs> that. But it's I love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Love this stuff. Every time we go to New Orleans, we always get at least a couple of bottles. Mm -hmm. And I think they changed last time we were there. They they said they were changing locations. But, I thought they had already changed locations. No, we went to the 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 original one one last time, right? Before, and that's when we got the bourbon. Oh yeah, yeah. Like 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 they gave us they gave us a sample of the bourbon, and we're like, okay, we'll buy in a bottle. Yeah. So if, for any of our listeners, if you're ever in New Orleans, seven seven three distillery, mm -hmm. it was just it was like 
north of the French Quarter, just on the other side of I-10. It's like it's like when you the uh, cemeteries. If you go under the bridge for for the interstate, it's, it's it's just it's just on the other side of the interstate. Yeah. We were, like, I think we had dropped off some friends who were going to do a cemetery tour, and there was about four or five of us who were just walking around, and we saw this, the distillery, and I was like, oh, they have tours, if y'all want to do one, and we just walked in, and mm-hmm. uh, it was a cute little distillery, but, um, oh, yeah, I got shitty. I remember, so, speaking of getting shitty with Zane, uh, when our, we did our honeymoon, we went up to the <laughs> Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. and we spent a few days in Portland, and um, <laughs> we went to... We had well, no, we had a, a okay. Groupon okay, group for this organic distillery in mm. Portland mm-hmm. across the river, and it was freezing cold. Like it was bright and sunny, but there there was this bitter cold wind that was mm-hmm. blowing through the city. It went went to your bones. Yeah, and we we were like we were on the west side of the river, so we had to walk f- over the bridge to get to the west side of Portland, and um, we were like, oh my god. the you know, when we get to the middle of the bridge, we're going to die because it's going to be, you know, nope. n- no protection. We were going to be so cold. Uh, like f- maybe 100 feet past the edge of the bridge or the, the land. S- land, the wind died off. And it, it was, was perfect. Yeah, it was lovely. And then once we got 100 yards to the to next shore, to the next shore, that's when the wind picked back up. Oh, my God, we're so cold. But then we uh, we, we, went went, the- we went to the use the Groupon truck. Great stuff. And then they had a map on the wall of like little, like of the city with little pinpricks everywhere. And we're, and Jason's like, what is all this? And he's like, oh, these are all the other distilleries and they're all within walking distance. And we're mm-hmm. like, uh, let's go walk to the next one. Yeah, we got shit based. Like it was like, like some of them was like 10, maybe 20 bucks. And you got, you get to, you get to pick like five or six shots. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you had to choose between like, like 10 or 20 and so i would pick five he would pick the other five and we'd swap yeah and we like and we just went from one place to the other just paying like 10 20 bucks and it, it was like it was the communion size shots too but but, but, but still, in total like it was maybe like two shots per person yeah and we did that probably five times yeah and we were drunk by the end of it yeah oh and then we went uh we did the it was kind of like a pub crawl where we hired that that oh, uh, pedi- we had another pet, group pedicab. on for a pedicab pedicab and, and um, uh he was straight <laughs> yeah but he was flirting but, 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 with us he was flirting time. us with the whole time and he's like oh here's a video of, of me having sex with my girlfriend yeah he's like, oh, <laughs> okay well that's nice oh thank you <laughs> so good times yeah but uh, yeah if you're ever in new orleans seven three distillery actually that's what i'm drinking it is seven three because i'm that's what my uh your, your, my, uh, my, we have these little uh, snifters that we're drinking the bourbon or the gin out of. Yep. And mine says 7.3. So. Yep. As it should be. <laughs> Some good stuff. So what are we talking about today, Mrs. Zane? Well, we're talking about like marriage and like well, what it was like from like, like what happened with <laughs> when I became a parent and everything, like <laughs> going through the whole process and everything. So Zane and I met in 2012, 12. in like January, February time frame. Yeah. Uh, I'm a late bloomer when it comes like to, to like, I only, I only came out uh, in my thirties. Yeah. You and were, you had only been out a year when I met you. Not, not even, not even that. Uh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, just a few months. Because you, well, you came out in the summer, I think, before I met mm. you, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, in, oh, in, oh, I want to say September. Okay. I came out in September. Okay. So early and then, fall. And then, and then we met in, in February. Yeah. But we've been chatting online for a little bit. Yeah. Because I was looking, I was dating a guy at the time, and it was, I was trying to increase our friend pool, because, like, we didn't have, like, I didn't have any friends, really. Mm-hmm. So I was like, eh, let me increase my friend pool a bit. So I met Zane online, and I was like, oh, we can be friends. And yeah. that's what we started out as. Yeah. And you introduced but, but, me but, to your gaggle of gays. Well, that's the thing. Like, it's like the first time we met, like, I still remember it. We, it was at uh, Barnes & Noble here. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I was walking one way, and you were coming from the garage, and we were coming in through the front, you know, mm-hmm. to the to the entrance, and yeah. We met, and then we also met Scott and uh, so, so a couple other people. Yeah, uh, three of our friends. And and the thing is, is that um, like like Scott and the, the couple other friends, I only met once before. Oh. <laughs> like like the first time I met them, uh, it was a guy called Gaze went to a 
to a um, Japanese restaurant. Yeah, that's right. And then and then we went, then we met there, and that was the second time. And then the uh, second time we met was. <laughs> Was was Phil Sandoval's? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With oh, the that, that was a gaggle of gays. Yeah, right. It was about twelve of us, but we uh, had there, there was, was about no twenty of us. 20, yeah, but there was about five Jasons there. Yeah, and so we all went by. They had to go by last names, yep. and one of the Jasons, who I'm not gonna name, uh, he nice. he yeah yeah he he went to uh, at one point he went to the bathroom and as soon as he left somebody was like okay who here has not slept with him mm-hmm. and it was me and like one other person yeah, yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> no slut shaming on this podcast no 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 <laughs> nothing wrong with that um yeah so we got we started dating really late february early march oh we were quick we, like i yeah. i i, I, I I consider us like a lesbian couple. (laughs) Like it was quick. You didn't move in. Like you started staying over quite a bit, but uh, because at the time you were like ten minutes from work. Yeah. Well, I I had a house in Athens, which is thirty minutes from work. So it was just tech support. Yep. But uh, and then we were dating till we had it. We it, it was same sex marriage was not legal yet. But we got married. We had a ceremony in 2015, mm-hmm. and uh, in New Orleans, we did a we had our we had a the actual ceremony in Jackson Square, mm-hmm. which was by far the cheapest venue in New Orleans. Yeah, luckily, uh, well, un- luckily it was great weather, but mm-hmm. unluckily it was uh, still St. Patrick's Day weekend. So yep. like the the day we got married on a Sunday because I'm cheap and I was like, oh, let's pick a a destination wedding on an inconvenient day and we can cut down the numbers of people who actually come. Mm-hmm. So we only got the, we only had about 25 people come. Yep. Yep. And it's, yeah. And, and it was like perfect. It was yeah. like perfect weather, perfect weather. I mean, the only downside to, to being married on Jackson square is like, it's still open to the public. Yeah. And well, me and you didn't see anybody, but my mom swears like people were trying to get a little too close. And she was like, I'm, like I'm gonna hit him. I'm gonna hit him. <laughs> I, I do. We were kind of like, uh, um, so we were we were not up against the gate with the cathedral. We were to like if, if your if your back is to Decatur in the river and you're facing the cathedral, we were on the left side. Yeah, under one of the oak trees. Yeah, in, on, in the shaded area. Yeah. And I do remember seeing quite a few people lined up against the gate or yes. the the wrought iron fences. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like they're just seeing what's going on. I mean, it's a it's a marriage, yeah. uh, or wedding, excuse me. <laughs> it was fun, and we, like we, the I felt bad for there was a couple the day before on the fourteenth on, sa- on Saturday. Yeah, <sighs> and it was pandemonium. At Jackson Square, oh. and that right in front of the cathedral mm-hmm. where they have all the fortune tellers and shit. Oh yeah, there was a band playing like loud as f- as as could be. Yeah, I don't know, like, and they had chairs set up in Jackson Square, <laughs> and I'm like, I could like we could barely hear each other just walking through, like, as we walked th- from our hotel through the square to the restaurant we were going to that night, mm-hmm. and it was jam packed, and it was like they were doing the St. Patrick's Day parades, mm-hmm. and I was like. How the fuck are you gonna have a wedding? Like I, I don't know how they heard anything. Yeah, yeah. Because it, but, it but, was. Yeah, but they did it. But ours was ours was better. Yeah, ours was. <laughs> it was quiet. It, we did like I think one of our uh, friends paid the bands to not play while we were having mm-hmm, the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it was a beautiful ceremony. Oh, I loved it. We it made was, a second line parade from Jackson oh, Square. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah we both like. Jason and I love to hold hands, but at the same time, we like after like a minute, we're like, "Oh, we're sweaty! Like, yeah. get your hands off me!" Yeah. So we're like wipe, wiping it down. So we both had to put uh, yeah. any perspirant on our hands. Yeah, we were putting degree on our palms. Yeah, like, like, like for for the ceremony, and then also for the second line. Mm-hmm. And then like we're going down down the street, and like, okay, let's let's do a little twist and swap hands. And then do another twist and swap hands again. And we were kind of like half-ass dancing the whole way down. Oh, and, and it was exhausting. I was so tired by the second block. Oh yeah. Oh, but I remember like we. Oh, I think it was Royal. We, we there was a, a street performer band. There, yeah. there were there were street performers, and they heard what the band behind us was playing. So they 
they stopped what they were doing and matched what they were playing. And there was two women who, who were from that and they joined us. Like you yeah. got, you got one lady and I got another mm-hmm. and they danced with us on the street for a, you know, a, a, a few good yards. Yeah. And that was fun. And our photographer got all kinds of pictures about all yeah, of it. It was a blast. And then, and we, then we, our... we went to Cafe Soleil. Yep. Up on Royal and, yeah, Royal Street. Yeah. And uh it's, it's it's like last time we went there, Cafe Soleil is no longer there. It's called something else, but it is still like it, the, it's, the, the room is still there. Yeah, the restaurant is still, but they have this upstairs event space. And it yeah, was really nice. Oh yeah, and it had some of the best Creole food or mm-hmm. etouffee. Oh, it was so good. And the the chef was this really cute, really butch lesbian, <laughs> and um, she uh, she cracked me up. But God, she could cook. Oh yeah. Yep. Good times. Good, good times. times. So that was 2015. And then we had, I don't know, have we talked about kids? Yeah, we, we talked about it. I think, I think like we both. Oh yeah, it, we did talk about it because we went to Dallas for a uh, surrogacy conference. Well, that was after. It was like, but we, I remember like before we even had the uh, wedding, it was like, we talked about, okay, what do you want to do with your life? And kids was part of it yeah. and i was like interested in in surrogacy but we did like you said later we did do the uh, conference and it was like no no it's yeah, like we, we don't have six figures to blow i was shocked because i was like you know because we have a couple of female friends i was like maybe we could ask them yeah, uh, but they they were like even if you have someone you don't have to pay a surrogate they're like the average cost of a surrogate or doing a surrogacy thing is 125,000 yeah and I was like Zane we can do this but that's gonna be it but I was like you know it'll be like 800 a month and Mm. for a while Mm. like to pay this off it's like another mortgage yep so and they're like oh you we have these uh programs you can like they had scholarships and shit like that but I was like you know we we weren't rich we're not wealthy but we were making well, we were kind of like we're, we're uh, like well middle class, like, uh, oh, upper middle. I think at this point we're upper middle class, but yeah, we we were making too much to really qualify for it. So I was like, yeah, eh. and um, and I think we did look into infant adoption too. Yeah, but that was like forty thousand was like the typical mm-hmm. one, and I was just like, no, it's like exp- if we knew then what we know now, we're glad that we didn't do it. Infant adoption. Uh, do you think, I don't know. If I, we had to do it again, I still might consider it. Really? Yeah. I might have changed jobs, too, because I don't think, I think I was making, not making as much as I could have, but hmm. I would have considered, um, okay. I would have considered infant adoption. Not that I don't love Justin and, you know, like, mm-hmm. Kiki, but at the same time, it's like, eh, I don't know. It's a thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. I, I, I just like the fact that, that they know how to wipe their own ass. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's it's a whole different ball of wax like getting an older kid versus a, mm-hmm. a baby so yep, yep. I, don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't want to do it now because we're like in our mid 40s like what, I, I love our granddaughters the younger one like mm-hmm. Ayana and Jalen but it's like it's like when when Kiki comes pick him up it's like <sighs> yeah oh I took last time they were here I told Zane I was like I don't want to be touched because they were, you know, they just hang on you. And it's like, it's like one thing after another. Mm-hmm. Ayana's getting into everything. And Jalen constantly has to be held and fed. And you're just like, mm. leave me alone. Or you got to change your diaper. And, mm-hmm. and it's just like, it just never ends. Yeah. But I think with, I mean, that's also too, like a toddler and a baby. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. I think we could have handled like oh, in yeah. our early 30s or mid 30s. We, I think we could have handled a, oh, yeah. a baby, but, but no, we're in our mid 40s. Yeah. Now. We're not doing this shit anymore. <laughs> the only way I would ever consider, I, I would still consider it. I would even consider it surrogacy. Yeah. If we won the lottery, if we win the lottery, yeah, that's the only way. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately someone uh, in Florida won that. No, that half a bil- that billion and a half. Yeah. Lotto. Bastard. Um, so let's see. That takes us to 2000. So we went back to... When did we start the less the So we started with APAC. Well, we looked in the... Inf- we did surrogacy. Too much. Infinite option. Too much. 
And then I was like, well, what if we do DHR, which is Department of Health Human Resources here in Alabama, because mm-hmm. it's free to adopt out of foster care. Yeah. And we, had, I think we talked about foster care, but you yeah. weren't interested. Is that right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm interested, always interested in adoption, but fostering, it's like, and even like, I'm, I'm more open to it now, but, but I, I still have my reservations because I've like, I've heard the stories about like people in foster care, you know, they get a kid like at two o'clock in the morning, they just got ripped out of their, you know, you know, the only house they've ever known, the only family mm-hmm. they've ever known. And they go to this stranger and they're, they're all kinds of like stuff going on with the kid. Yeah. And so, you know, the foster family, the foster family puts all this time and love and energy into getting them stable, stable, and then, then one day DHR is like, okay, back to the parents you go. Yeah. And well, j- j- just like, I, I know that they're, they're not just going to do it just like willy nilly, but uh, like just, but it's like, but then they go back to the, go back to the, to the birth parents and it's like, it's good for a month. And then they're back in the foster care system again. And it's just like, I like, it would break my heart just to like, get them stable and then they have to would it still break your heart now (sighs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. okay because sometimes like when you and glee are interacting i'm like he would give her back in a heartbeat i I would give wesley back well yeah um (sighs) but when you're talking about uh you know putting all that time and energy into a child and then having them snatched out i kind of feel like we did that to Kalia's foster family too. <laughs> actually we did because you know? so they were about to adopt her yeah but in the same breath you know they were helping kiki to try make sure she kept yeah, yeah so yeah. that was you know not really you know they i think they were always aware that like the goal, kiki was not a bad mom and yeah it was not like oh, it, kiki, it was a bad situation yeah he was just poor and couldn't like, mm-hmm. get to her so and um the social worker was not the best person mm-hmm. no but let's see we got justin into when did we get we got married well let's see we 15. decided to it was, when did gay it marriage was, become legal it was like 16 uh, i think i want to yeah somewhere in there yeah it was it was well, after uh, our it, ceremony it, it, well actually yeah it was after our ceremony but it became legal in alabama but before it became legal federally like remember no 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 it, it, it was legal in alabama first uh yeah, yeah. well i don't i don't remember that but um because yeah. because i remember going to big spring park and you know there was a big celebration that was after the supreme court ruling no it was alabama it was Alabama. I know. <laughs> I don't think it was I'm the one with the memory. Me- me- I realize that, but I also don't think Alabama swept the wave for gay marriage. Ever. No, no, no. It's but it was. It's just. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, but we got. We started the classes, and we were holding off getting legally married. Like it, we had. I think we had started the the process for adoption through DHR. Yeah, yeah. We, and, we went through APAC, yeah. and then gay marriage became legal mm-hmm. in that time period. Yeah, and we were like, "Oh, should we go ahead and get married?" Um, but there was like a rule that if you were married, you had to be married for like for, two years. Or oh, like, three years. Three years. Yeah, you get a waiver, but it was not guaranteed. Yeah. So yeah, like when we were when we were going through our uh, adoption classes. Like we asked asked them that, and they're like, "Should we go ahead and get married?" And they're like, "Uh, no. Yeah. It's like you, you you have to be married at least three years before." You I can think have... they were also worried because we were a same sex couple that they that, would not that too. Yeah, but that was uh, sixteen. I think it was when we were going through that because we got we finished in like early fall of 16 if i remember correctly somewhere there yeah and then we got it was like a year before we got justin yeah we got justin we we got several no i remember we we never got any like we didn't get a lot of like we inquired on kids but we never got a lot of like oh here's a match for you yeah except for that one kid there was one gay kid that we were interested. A yeah, fifteen year old gay kid, but he at, backed at, out of the last second. Like like literally we were going g- drive down to Birmingham that morning and he gets a call saying he, he wants a mom. Yeah. So we're like, Okay, that's fine and that's the last we heard. Yeah. 
But th- there was a, well. And then we got Justin in October of 17, if I remember correctly. Or, yeah, right, bef- right before Thanksgiving, somewhere in there. And then we adopted him in Jan, no, mm, April? March. M- early March yeah. of 18. It, right before it, his 18th birthday. Before his birthday. Yeah. And then um, that was, yeah, he's born in 2000, so it's like his birth, yeah. his age always matches the, yeah. you know, the last two digits. Yeah, yeah, the, whatever, whatever the current year is, that's it, That's how old he is. Yeah, the last two digits anyway. Um, I'm trying to think. We got him in eight, or we adopt, the adoption was finalized in 18. There, I think we were actually, oh, and then. Kiki was aging out about that time, mm-hmm. his sister, and we had started, like, we had met Kiki and Kalia uh, yeah. that, that Christmas of 17. Yep, yep. when she was four. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember we went down to Coleman and met them and hung out with them, and I had Kalia in my lap, and I was bouncing her, and she just turned around. She's like, could you please stop bouncing? I was like, oh, sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she was very articulate, even for a four-year-old. I'm like, yes, ma'am. So we hung out, and then, let's see, what happened? She aged out, and DHR was like, you're not, they, this was to Kiki, they were like, you're not stable, so we're going to, you know, you aged out, but you're not stable enough to take your daughter. So they moved Kalia from Coleman mm-hmm. to Tuscaloosa, which is about two hours away. Yeah, and she has no car. And then they were like, oh, you're not trying hard enough to see your daughter. But they're not providing transportation to go see her daughter. Mm-hmm. And so when she got her first like legal notice of they're going to start the termination process for her parental rights, I was like, I asked her, I was like, do you want me to get involved? And so over the course of that year of 18, I got involved and tried to help her. Um, like I started taking her to court cases mm-hmm. and um, made sure she went to everything and was helping her out. And I, at that point, I finally went to a lawyer. I was like, you know, we we I had, I had asked DHR. I was like, can I have custody of Kalia since we have custody of the uncle? Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh no, when you adopted Justin, you severed his familial ties to his family, so he's no longer legally related to his own biological sister. Yep, and niece. <sighs> So I was like, okay. So I went and contacted a lawyer, uh, the lawyer that did our adoption for Justin, and um, to see if we could adopt Kiki. Mm-hmm. And then she filed the petition, and the, the, the law clerk sent it back that um, a same sex couple could not adopt an adult because she was 20. Two, she, she, I think. She, yeah, no, she was in her early 20s. Yeah, yeah. she was. Yeah. She, she, she was, you know, legal. 20, I think. Yeah, yeah. But you, we couldn't adopt her as a gay couple. If we were a heterosexual married couple, we could adopt her. Or like step parent or some blood relative. Yeah, we could then, but not no, not as a no, gay couple. In Alabama. So you uh, looked online and found out, oh, we can do it in Florida because they don't care as long as you pay them for yeah. it. Tennessee, Mississippi, and Georgia all had like residency requirements for mm-hmm. adoption. So I contacted a lawyer in Florida, in Destin. And I was like, hey... I can't adopt, you know, as a, a gay male, I, gay male couple, I can't mm-hmm. adopt um, this girl uh, who's willing to be adopted. Can I come down to Florida? And they're like, sure. I was like, do I, they're like, would you come down here and get a P.O. box just to establish some res- residency? <laughs> um, so I drove down, got a P.O. box for a few months, um, mm-hmm. paid for like six months or three or four months of it, I think. Yeah. And never used it, but I had it. <laughs> um, and then... They, we, me, Kiki, and Justin drove down to Florida mm-hmm. and signed the documents, and that's how it became. She, she's legally. Uh, yeah. And yeah. then that was like January time frame, I think. It was. Yeah, it, it was early in the year. Yeah, yeah it was early in the year. Yeah. And, and, then, and, then, and, and then, like, sh- like shortly after that, Alabama was like, oh, okay, you're, you're now related. Here, here, have joint custody. Of well, what I was going to say before that, uh, we. It was maybe like January, February time frame that we finalized adoption with Kiki. Then in March, 
you and I and a few of our friends from the original ceremony went down back down to oh, New yeah. Orleans. Oh yeah, got legally married. Yep, by our fr- our mutual fr- uh, friend Michael. Yeah, Michael did the ceremony and was he, the officiant. He was officiated. Yep. And so that was March, <laughs> and then on the way back from New Orleans, our our friend Chad, Chad was like, "Hey, there's a house in my neighborhood. You should come look at it." And I was like, "Okay, so we'll stop by." He's he's like, "No, no, no! You need to come right now." Yeah. Because this was in the housing market, it was starting to get really hot. Yeah, and so like we go that day, and it's it's for sale by owner, and the owner meets us, and we. Well, I met up with him because I I was I had a real flexible work schedule. I still do as a software engineer, but I I I called the owner and asked if we could meet up, and I called Zane and I was like, Zane, get Justin, come over here immediately. Yeah. So they came over, and we were like. Oh yeah, this is. This, I mean, th- there was definitely stuff that needed to be fixed, but for the pro- and and we're still friends with the previous owner. Mm-hmm. But like, it's like, he, he's a really sweet guy. Yeah, really nice family. They had five kids, and well, now six. So they had another. One? They had another one. Oh, good lord. And so yeah, so they needed a bigger house, and this this place is a good size house. Yeah, but it was. Like we were, we were able to sell our last house with enough equity to be able to afford to like redo the kitchen and mm-hmm. some of the stuff in the yeah. house. So. Kitchen, the kitchen in the great room definitely needed for renovation. Yeah. Uh, great room had a carpet in it that was just nasty. Oh, well, I remember when we pulled it up. Every time you touched, every time you pulled it up, there was like a cloud of dust would come up with it. It was so Blech. gross. Ugh. And then there was like four layers of linoleum underneath mm-hmm. that. So. Like one for every decade. Oh, God, it was awful. But then we, so we bought the house in May. Kiki was still going through the the termination. Well, she was still in the pro, like trying to get her parental rights back. Yeah. And I guess it took a little bit for the paperwork to make it from Florida up to Alabama. Mm-hmm. And so I got a call from no, I went down to court date with Kiki, and they were like, oh. Um, well, since you're the adoptive father, we're going to give you joint custody. Yeah. And I, I was shocked because I was just like, oh, just give it to her. Like, <laughs> you know, I was, I was hoping, I, you know, I would have, I was glad to take Clea. You know, we were sort of glad to help, but I was still thinking, I was like, I'm just give it to fucking Kiki. She can handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they were like, we're going to do joint custody. Um, so we've had her since June 30th of 19. Mm-hmm. And what sucks is that, like, right after we got her, we had actually started the process to adopt another kid. Oh, yeah. And we, we were, like, we were in the car, and we were talking about it, and I'm like, uh, we need to tell the social worker. And you're like, you, you should? And I was like, yeah, we, we, got, we, got, we, got a, we got a we got a child. Yeah. And you called, and she was, she was, not, she yeah. was not happy. And I, th- I did felt really guilty about that one. And then she was like, well, like, give it two weeks. Let me know what you think and see if you can handle it. And we called her back. We can't handle no. This. I was like, just having a five-year-old in the house wasn't crazy enough. I was like, I can't imagine having a 13 or 15-year-old foster boy, foster kid with his own trauma. I was like, oh, this is... I think if we had fostered before, we might have handled it better. But it was just a lot for us at that moment. Uh, yeah. So... So we've been we've been parents and grandparents you now for <laughs> we went we, we went to being a parent for like hardly a year to being a grandparent mm-hmm. and now we're grandparents three times over. Yep, and, and ho- hopefully that that'll do. <laughs> well, I think Justin will probably have kids eventually. Mm, he says like nope, like I'm like you better make sure <laughs> your well, polite game is not that strong. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll if he does it'll because he's twenty two three now, three. So, yeah. So it'll I'm I suspect if he does it'll probably be like in his thirties. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to be financially stable. He's he's been maturing, so I've been. Proud he of that. he definitely has. I I will give him that. Yes. Well, all right. So in the in the five years that we have been parents, how do you think it's affected our marriage? Hmm. <sighs> It's, I mean, it's like we have to, you know, shift priorities a lot. I mean, we still support each other, like with everything, but it's, um, well, with, when it was just Justin, it was, it wasn't like, I mean, like we had to, 
it was more like the car situation. Explain. Like, like when we first got Justin, he was like, "I want to go back to Pale City. I want, I want to go see my friends. I want to go." And I'm, and he had to borrow pretty much my car at the time, and he kept wanting to go go down. And then uh, for my uh, graduation to to nursing school, he he borrowed it to, to go down, and he wrecked it on my graduation day. <laughs> And Jason told me, like, after the ceremony, and, and he's like, calm down, calm down. Like, uh, but, yeah, I think you talked about it in another, like, yeah. epi- podcast, uh, episode, yeah. Well, it cracked me up, though. It was like, I was with Jennifer. Jennifer and I were going to go to your graduation ceremony at yeah. the Von Braun Center here in Huntsville. And um, we uh, are eating lunch. Justin calls. He's like, I had an accident. I was like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Okay." So it was, it was the car was still drivable. Yeah, it was just he fucked up the he'd like the, hit another car, fucked up the fender, and like damaged the air conditioning because it's like at the front of the yeah right behind the fender. Um, but it was still drivable, and he's like, "You're gonna have to come get me," and I'm like, "Nope, nope, you did I was this." Like, you were uh, 18 years old. You're gonna have to figure it out. I was like, "I'm sorry, you're upset. Calm down. Get yourself cool off." Just come up back home because I like I cannot leave even if I wanted to. It's going to be like hours before I can get down there. So yep, but he did it. He did it, and um, yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> Justin and cars. Yeah, and and yeah, it was just the, you know the the car situation and like he's still trying to figure us out and we're trying to figure him out yep. and we're. <laughs> Still trying to figure him out because he's so tight lipped. Yeah. I mean, he, he's he's definitely opened up and he's he's more calm. Like I, I can tell he's calmer. Yeah. Well, he's he's secure in our relationship. Yeah. 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 Even though he's not very talkative, he's still like. Mm-hmm. I think you know we're comfortable with each other. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I I would say like getting Justin because he was seventeen when we got him wasn't that big of an impact on us because like we could leave him at home. It wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. And yeah. We like. I don't know. I'm a pretty liberal parent. I was like, I was like, if you want to have your girlfriend spend the night, I don't care. Yeah. I was like, just wear a just, fucking just, condom. Just, yeah. Please um, wear a condom. Yeah. I was like, I do not want to be a grandfather just yet. Nope. Um, and he's always been pretty respectful about that. And yeah, for the most, he's always been a very sweet and conscientious kid. So yeah. he definitely like, like he, he'll watch the, watch the kids while the three of us go, go out to eat or, or drink or something. Yeah, it's been lovely having a built-in babysitter. Mm-hmm. I would I would say having Kalia was probably the bigger impact. Uh, yeah. On every our lives just in yes. general. Because like it's like privacy is almost out the window. Yeah. And just she has so little self control too, especially with five when we got her. Mm-hmm. Like the first year, she would wake up in the like two o'clock in the morning, knock on our door, and it's like. I had a nightmare or I need a drink of water or it was, it was like, Oh, I have a boo-boo on my elbow. Or she'd get up and go sleep with uncle or yeah. she'd get up and play on the tablet or something. Yeah. And it's like got to the point where, okay, girl, if you wake us up in the middle of the night, you're, you're getting no tablet. Mm-hmm. And then that, that, that calmed her the fuck down and calmed her down. But yeah, it's like, she, I love her to death, but she is just drama, drama, drama. And it's all, like, for the most part, self-inflicting. And it's like, like, girl. I don't know. This is actually one thing, like, Zane is actually about to start counseling, too, about yeah. this. Because I, you know, I've mentioned him. I was like, you lose your temper really easy with her. Yeah. And um, I admit it. <laughs> no, well, yeah. But, I don't know, what do you feel like the, is there a root to that part? It's, I, th- I think it's like that. It's like, I, I don't like drama. It's like, and it's like, I don't want to deal with bullshit. Yeah. It, it's like, 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 well, she'll be on the tablet and it's like, like we could hear it like three rooms away. It's like, Clea, please, please turn down the Please turn down the volume, and she she mutes the whole the the, the tablet, and we're like, you, you can turn it, you can listen to it, just not that loud. Well, you said I to turn down the volume, and I'm like, what did we say? 
Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What did we say? It's like you said, turn it down. Yes, that didn't mean mute it. She, she has a bad, like she's gotten better, but she, in the beginning she had a bad habit of putting words in our mouth. Yeah, she's she can sass really well. Yeah. And I mean, part of it too is like we are pretty sarcastic with her too. Yeah. But, but her sarcasm comes off as mean. Yeah. Where, like, if she'll be like, can I have ice cream? Like, no. But when, you know, it was like, and then immediately, I like, yes, you can have ice cream. Yeah, yeah. But with her, it's like, can you turn on the television? No. And I'm like, beg your pardon. She's like, no. And then it's like, Kalia. She's like, okay, I'll turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Like, little shit. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's like, it's, when they're your kid, it's like, like the... When they, they know how to push the buttons and oh they do, <laughs> and she she knows how to do it. Yeah, and so and that's I, and I tell her like, girl, please just, you know you know just talk to me like a person. I'll do the same. But every, like, well I, I remember what was it the other day I was in the bathroom and she knocked on the door and, and she she said so, she said asked you something about like can I have like. Can you yeah. check something? And, and you're like, uh, watch your tone, young lady. <laughs> and you were like, well. I was like. Yeah. She's going to be a sassy little thing. I try. I don't know. I, t- I, I, I'm, I, the, I find that the more tired and or in pain I am, the less patience I have. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I have had my moments where I just want to strangle the shit out of her for being sassy. Oh yeah. Um, but I don't know. So most of the time, I'm I feel like I'm pretty chill about her and just be like, please and I, stop and being I'm, a dick. And I'm and I'm trying to be. Yeah. But but I am the I am the mean one, and I, I take <laughs> that with a badge of honor. Well, I will say I worry about you having that badge of honor because I don't want, I want you to have a good relationship with her. And I, I do too, but it's like, I try to like, like yesterday when, uh, you, you were out with your, uh, family, mm-hmm. like, uh, me and her went and got Arby's and, you know, no problem. Like we did the drive through. We ate, ate in here in the kitchen together. We listened to music and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, do you want to watch, you know, uh, like we, I've been, sh- uh, like uh, showing her the the cla- the the nineties X Men cartoons right. or Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Like we'll we'll sit down and watch that together. It's like you want to watch one of those. Like no, oh, we'll do it another time. I'm like okay. And so, it, but I try to do stuff with her, but it's like I, l- l- I, l- yeah. I know I I I think that is the right approach, and I think you just got to keep doing it. Yeah, and I know you want me to like be like be out here and like. Like you, you tend to be out here in the great room where we're recording. Yeah. Like, and you, you know, you're watching TikTok on your phone while she's like on the TV watching whatever. And it's like, I try for a while, but then I just like, she gets so into what she's watching. She, I mean, she'll, <laughs> she'll literally just scream at the top of her lungs at the TV, at the TV. Yeah. And I'm like, Clea, girl calm down she's like what she and, just, and, and it's like well i ha- also have adult add so i get i can get overstimulated yeah. easily and i'm just like i need like after especially after work i need time to decompress yeah. and i'm just like i don't like i think that's probably more than ang- it's not anger it's uh overstimulation over yeah I, I i yeah it's overstimulation yeah, yeah. Gwen has that problem. Or, uh, my little brother's mom has that issue too. It's like overstimulation and it just can escalate quickly. Mm-hmm. And I get I get worried sometimes because I'm like, okay, you, you two. I'm just worried about your you two's relationship. But yeah. I think <laughs> as long as you keep doing what you've been doing about you know yeah. offering to do stuff and <clears throat> constantly being affectionate with her. Oh no, oh, I think it'll work out. Well, <clears throat> it's definitely a better relationship than me and my sister had. Yeah, I mean, you and Shane always did kind of have a like <laughs> well contentious relationship growing up. Well, yeah, I mean, we just, I mean, like when we were kids, we fought all the time. Yeah. But now we we get along fine. I mean, we rag on each other, but that's our way of like you know, like yeah. like bonding. 
I just feel sometimes like sometimes I feel like you're replicating that relationship with Khalil and, and sometimes I do I, I do get that sensation of like oh yeah I'm kind of repeating this with her but like I said it's like Shane and I get along great now. Let's look. Yeah, but we also have 10 more years of her around and like living on her roof, probably. 10 years? She's nine. Well, okay, let's say eight. Okay. It's like... <laughs> let's, let's be gracious. She graduates early and goes to college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, no, no, it's like, it's, it's like I said, it's like, I think when she learns how to, I and I repeat this to her, just about every other day it's not what you say it's how you say it yeah like and i and i've given her examples it's like oh you're wearing that shirt oh you're wearing that shirt like and yeah. she, and she, she kind of laughs and gets it but it's like it's it's not what you say it's how you say it she's also nine yeah so but i i think she will improve she's she's um She's an intelligent little girl. Too. She is. Oh, she can read very well. Yeah, and she's like, and, and she can read between the lines of subtext for the most part. For the, like, I don't know. It's like, like we we we're obviously joking with her, and she gets all, oh, why'd you do that? Why'd you say that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, but um, but no, she, she's a good artist. Yeah. Like like she's going to art classes and. Um, she's very creative. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. She, and it's, she also has a like like me and has appreciation for music. Yeah, like like she, you two are really cute in the car because you're both like well, arguing over the radio. Yeah, well, yeah, you two like me. I don't give a shit about music that much. It's just background noise. I'd like to have it, but I don't like I I can sit in silence, frankly. But <laughs> you two are like you especially are like no, we have to share. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay, okay. What gets me is that, like, like you know, she cleans her room. She has the tablet in her lap. She already has something to entertain her. I'm driving this this car. I need something to entertain me while I'm driving. You're on your phone watching TikTok or reading your book or whatever. <laughs> and she's like, I want to listen to Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm like. This shit is like no, like, but you're like, well, okay, Zane, let's share the radio. It's like, <sighs> well, you also get the the radio like all day long if you want it. Yeah, and well, 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 I'm driving by myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, like if it was me and her just by ourselves, I'd be like, and if she asked, like, oh, can we listen to that, please? I'm like, yes, we may. Unless it's Justin Bieber, Britney Spears, or any of those goddamn boy bands, <laughs> otherwise no. But yeah, but otherwise yeah, we'll, we'll, like I'll stop and we'll listen to it. But it's like, but but she, no, but she has gotten good about like, like I'm an '80s kid. I love my '80s music, mm-hmm. but I also like you know love '90s, you know 2000 for 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 a good like any, just any any genre except country. Right. But it's like. Um, but a song will come on and she'll know the lyrics to it. Yeah. And it's like, wow, okay, I'm doing something right. <laughs> if you're, we can start listening to her, listen to more black music. Cause we've, oh, I mean, I, she, I, she I, 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 I try to incorporate like it's, I know, but it's, it, like, but, but like I have Sirius XM and like, I, you know, I definitely put it on like the soul, soul in the groove, mm-hmm. but I can't put it on the the fly because yeah. because it's like you know the the n word comes out every now oh, and yeah. then. Yeah, I know that, but I always feel I, sometimes I'm like you know she's getting a very white experience, even yeah. though she, like she you know she's around her uncle and her and Wesley. It's not like she's you know yeah the only black person around, but I still feel like you know you know like those families that adopt. Um, Chinese ba- you know, yeah. babies from China and they try to make sure they're part of their culture. <laughs> Sometimes they feel like, I think we need to go to like, take her to an R&B artist <laughs> show or, you know, Well, but. well, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we, we, we go to a Juneteenth and, and we do, you know, we do other things. She, she's not like the only black face around. So I no. like she's, you know, she's surround, like, not surrounded, but she's definitely not alone. Yeah. Like the neighbors is the down the street, you know, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. But sometimes I just feel, you know, it, motherly guilt. So. <laughs> well, this is a good time to transition. So, um, 
Uh, so for all nine of our listeners, if you have any funny stories about your kids. Or if you need some bad parenting advice. Email us at guide to poor parenting at gmail.com. What are we even have what are we doing for snack time? Well, uh, I think we finished some of the pineapple that, that I cut up earlier this week. Yeah. I was we were rushing to get this done. I'm like, fuck, I don't know what we have for snacks. I'm like, and eh, we have pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh, about a month ago, like like ever since Jason got me hooked on TikTok, I've been getting videos on like stuff from Amazon you can buy and try this gadget and it was like a um a pineapple uh, core, yeah. like you just twist, like cut off the top, twist it down to the bottom and pull it out. And you, it's just like just circles. And I'm just, I love it. I have created a monster in you with TikTok because <laughs> I, uh, I, I got him onto it. And um, so our friend EJ used to be bad about something like. He still is. He's still pretty bad, but you, uh, you outdo him on N- videos, what? at least on my feed. Okay, well. Well, you're the one I think about when I send Aww, those videos. I love you for them. I'm, not, I'm just saying you do. You send a lot. So, yes. And I love you for them. Yeah, I love you too. Um, all right. So we've we've got our snack. So it's story time. Zane, what do you got for a good story? Uh, I got it doesn't a... have to be about clear Justin, or mm. you can tell a good Justin story if you have one. No, it's like I don't like. Well, can it? Um, well, it's or whatever you want. Baby. Well, it's 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 probably like my this would be a story my da- I could tell the story about how I cut my sister's hair. Oh, it's already been told. It's already been told. Your mom. Really? Uh, uh, I think. Well, go ahead and tell it. Well. But Shane, I think Shane was going to tell that story when she comes on. Oh well, then we'll 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 save that for another day. Well, I'll tell a Kalia story. It was like shortly after we first got her. I don't know, like she was like, she was five, and I don't know, she, Kiki says she, she went through this same phase when she was around that age, but Kalia didn't want to go to the bathroom, like, for the longest time. She would hold it in to the absolute last second, <laughs> and sometimes she, she, she'd pee herself, sometimes she, met, she made it to the bathroom, sometimes she didn't, mm-hmm. and... Uh, one day she was, I mean, she was doing full blown pee pee dance. Like she was holding herself, just going from what, just dancing mm-hmm. back and forth. And I'm like, girl, come with me to the bathroom. No, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's like, please, you, you need to go to the bathroom. You, you got, you gotta go. Pee. No, I don't. No, I don't. I, I don't have to pee. I don't have to pee. Girl, you need to go to the bathroom. Please drop your drop your pants and sit down on the toilet no no i I don't have to go i'm fine i'm fine sit down right now (laughs) (sighs) you're so me (sighs) tears she pulls down her pants the instant her ass hits the toilet she's peeing (laughs) like right then and it's like a loud like Loud piss. Loud piss that goes on for a full minute. And the whole time, she's looking everywhere in the bathroom except at me. Well, yeah, you yelled at her. And and I'm looking at her like, you fucking bitch. (laughs) I remember, to, to add on to that story, I remember when we first got her, she would... Ask one of us to come in and hold her hand while she pooped. <laughs> yeah. It hurts! Hold my hand! I was like, girl, fucking shit on your own. Or <laughs> she, like, she would ask us to wipe her sometimes. Like, oh. she, I mean, that only lasted a few months, but at the same time, I was like, girl, wipe your ass. I'm like, you five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. That's why you, you, you get adopt kids that, that can wipe their own ass. <laughs> Well, that was a good story. Thanks, babe. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for to all our nine listeners uh, for listening to another episode of A Guide to Poor Parenting. If you like our podcast, give us a five-star rating on whatever platform you are listening on. And if you don't like our podcast, just like when our kids ask why we won't pay for ballet lessons when they skip half the ones we paid for. Tough shit. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.